Look, you all love Prisma. It's just a fact. But I find something so fantastic that I know by the end of this video, all of you are going to want to try it out. Before I show you what it is, let's take a quick look at how Prisma works to understand why we even need something new. So Prisma does two very important things for you. The first is providing a type safe client for you to query your database from your application. You do this by defining your database schema in a Prisma specific format and then running a code gen step to target the language of your choice. This requires additional tooling like a syntax highlighter for your editor, a language server for autocomplete, a file watcher for development. So what does all this complexity even get you? By having a neutral source of truth, the Prisma schema file and all the surrounding tooling, you can generate clients for any language. TypeScript, Go, and the vision was to support many, many others. Unfortunately, there wasn't much interest in anything besides TypeScript <coughs> for good reason. So Prisma has since retired support for everything else. <laughs> So now we've made all the trade-offs of trying to be multi-language without actually taking advantage of any of it. Another side effect of this broad scope is what happens at runtime. Your SQL queries are actually forwarded to a locally running service written in Rust. I know what you're thinking, Rust, isn't that that thing that makes everything blazingly fast? But remember, performance comes from architecture, not just from language. And in this case, the overhead of starting up the Rust binary and communicating with it has performance implications. In most environments, this is fine, but you guys know I'm addicted to the serverless. I'm addicted to minimizing those cold starts and there are severe cold start impacts given the size of the Rust binary. We're talking multi-second cold start times, which isn't really accessible for production applications, especially not in exchange for an ORM. The use of Rust doesn't really benefit the end user. It was so Prisma can maintain one core across many languages, which they're no longer doing anyway, while dropping the ball on JavaScript things like ESM support. The second thing Prisma does for you, and I love this feature, is letting you manage your schema in a declarative way. What this means is you don't have to think about migrations or any of that crap, just define the current state of your schema give it to Prisma, it'll figure out what schema changes to make. I don't have too many complaints here. Again, the tool is written in Rust, so it can be a bit challenging getting it working in serverless environments to run migrations programmatically. And you still do need additional tooling to have a good experience, but this feature is so good, I'm almost willing to put up with it. Okay, so now let's talk about the tool that is absolutely going to be replacing Prisma for me. Before I share it, I really appreciate a like and a subscribe if you're enjoying this video. If you're not enjoying this video, a like and a subscribe would really help me out emotionally. All right, so here we go. The Prisma killer has arrived and it is Drizzle. I spoke with the team behind Drizzle, so let me give you some background. They're a consultancy with a ton of experience shipping applications to production that use relational databases. They have a sustainable business, enough so that a few of them are able to focus on building Drizzle. The fundamental difference between Drizzle and Prisma is that they have doubled, tripled, quadrupled down on TypeScript. Drizzle will never be available in other languages, and that's okay because they're committed to providing an incredible TypeScript experience. Similar to Prisma, Drizzle is comprised of two parts. The first is Drizzle Kit. Drizzle Kit is what I've been looking for for years, I think. Just like Prisma, it's a declarative schema management tool. Define your schema, let it do the work of making changes to your database. The key difference here is you do it all in TypeScript. No Prisma specific language. This means there's no additional tools to install, nothing. It's just plain old TypeScript. Oh, that's that good shit. You can define your tables, indexes, reference columns from one tables from another, whatever you need to do it's got you. The Drizzle team has been very intentional about not creating a generic relational database abstraction. If you're using Postgres, you import from the Postgres package to get a Postgres specific experience. That way there's no loss of capability or performance depending on what database you're using. When you've made changes to your schema, you can run one command and have it generate migrations to apply to your database. And that covers what Prisma's migration tool can do and more without any of the complexity. The second piece is Drizzle ORM, which is a type saved query builder. This is the best kind of ORM because it's not really an ORM. The team's design philosophy is if you know SQL, you know Drizzle. So when you're writing these queries, it's a very close one-to-one -one mapping of the equivalent SQL, except with type safety turned on. Because your schema is written in TypeScript, there's no code gem step. It's all done through inference. So no need for a watcher or anything. Everything is updated in real time. They've handled so many details here and thought through so many things. Anything from letting you decide how to cast a big integer in JavaScript or if a timestamp should be a date or a string or how to retain type safety with raw SQL or extensibility, it's all there. 
They even support prepare statements, which unlocks huge performance gains. So, so. I haven't seen another tool do this, and I don't really know why. It seems so obvious in hindsight. I'll let them share their own benchmarks, but I've seen some early numbers and they look phenomenal. And they already support so much. For Postgres, you have all the normal Postgres drivers, but you also have support for NeonDB's HTTP API and AWS's data API. For MySQL, you've got support for MySQL 2, PlanetScale's HTTP API, a bunch of support for different flavors of SQLite, and more and more and more are coming. As you guys can see, I'm super hyped. There's so many details here I couldn't get into for this video, but you can just go experience it for yourself. I need every single one of you to go over to their GitHub repo and give them a star. It's the least you can do and they deserve it. I link the details in the description. Thank you for watching. I'm really looking forward to never hearing about Prisma again.